Welcome learners. We are going to discuss something about our very ancient civilization that is Indus Valley civilization. Before we move to the discussion of this civilization, let us know its period. When we write history, we divide it into three parts. First part we call prehistoric, that means those things happened even when history was not there. That means nothing had been written about this period, that is prehistoric. The cave people or Aboriginal people before any civilization started is known as prehistoric period. We have got a lot of works of art even from the prehistoric period. For example, from Franco Cantavarian area, we have got some painting inside the caves. Scholars believe those were done by the primitive men when they were dwelling in the caves. It is not only in Europe, even in India same thing happened. We got a lot of such cave paintings of prehistoric period, especially in Vimvetka, Mirpur, Hosenkabad and other period. The next we come to the period which is now proto-history. When you write a history, three things are very important. First thing is the archaeological evidence. On the basis of that, we can write history. For example, the monuments or any constructions like temples, mosque, church, any remains of this thing from the proto-historic period, we write something on that. So the second thing, we need literary source, something that was written in that period, somebody and from that literature, we come to know about the period. And the third thing is also very important, that is coins. From that also, we come to know about history. Since Indus Valley civilization has only one source of knowledge about that period, that is archaeological. Unfortunately, there are some writings that is we find in the shape of seals. On the top of these seals, which we will discuss later, there are some writing there, a script is written on that. But unfortunately, we cannot decipher that yet. So, we cannot claim that period is something more than prehistoric and less than history. So, we call it proto-history. Now, interesting thing about Indus Valley civilization was a long time it was unknown to us. We never knew about our ancient culture. What we know about our ancient culture from our epics like Ramayana and Mahabharata and another that is Vedas. You all know about four Vedas from which we come to know about our culture, our civilization and our religious thought. Now, interesting thing that none of these sources talked about Indus Valley civilization. It was first discovered by two archaeologists. One was John Marshall, an European, and his assistant R. D. Banerjee. So their endless effort for years brought out the site of 
Indus Valley Civilization in two places, Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. It was undivided India in those days and it was ruled by the British. So, when it was discovered by the archaeologist, we can say that it is a part of our Indian culture. Now, it is a part of Pakistan. Nonetheless, we can claim Indus Valley civilization definitely as our own culture. Indus Valley civilization has given us so many things. First, after the discovery of Indus Valley, we come to know about beautiful town planning in those two sites in Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. Scholars have not any unanimous opinion about the dating of Indus Valley civilization. Approximately it could be said that it was something between 2500 BCE to 1500 BCE. But there are different opinions. Some believe even much before that this civilization began. Of course, when we see the highly developed kind of art and architecture from the sites, we can believe that it was not built just within few hundred years. So, it, it was a legacy which started long before that. In fact, our epic like Ramayana Mahabharata, which had been dated by the scholars, somebody said that it is not 500 uh, BCE or even beyond that, but it must be something between 500 BCE to 500 CE. In any case, we can surely say that Indus Valley civilization is just an end of a very ancient civilization. Let us know about the authorship of this civilization. Who are the people who developed this civilization in Harappa and Mahanjadaro? There are a lot of disputes about this authorship. Some believe the Aryans came from the central India part to India and other opinion they say no, actually from South India Dravid people or Aryan people, other civilization came here to develop such beautiful civilization in Indus Valley. The third opinion is that this civilization actually developed in this area and they resisted the Aryans to enter this place and ultimately it was destroyed by the Aryans. Now, if we see the excavation of Indus Valley civilization, there are seven layers of uh, this civilization we found in this area. That means at least six times it was completely demolished. So, it is a long period, a gradual development that set in these areas. Now, let us discuss about the town planning of this civilization. The town planning of Harappa and Mahanjadaro is so splendid that even some western experts they commented that the civilization's town planning is much more advanced than any civilization of that time. The period that we have already mentioned is almost at the same time when Egyptian civilization, Assyrian civilization, Mesopotamian civilization and also Greek civilization developed. That means 
the whole movement started almost in the same time and Indra's Valley also participated in that movement. Town planning has a particular interesting which is very modern in characteristics. The whole township is divided into few areas with straight parallel roads. These roads run just parallel from end of the city to the other end of the city and each of these parallel roads is connected with smaller lanes in squares in rectangular all over the town planning. In these square areas or we can say now plots had the kind of houses. The houses were made of sun dried brick. That means at that time baked bread was not used. And these bricks were much more smaller in size than we have in our modern times. In spite of the sun baked bricks, the, its stability is very very strong. For that reason it still exists in our time. Other thing which is very interesting to note that every house has its sewage system. Along with the roads which are parallel to each other, the sewage system is connected with the side of the roads from the smaller drainage which uh, just uh, emptied in the longer and broader sewage system in the main road. In those days the main transport was a bullock cart and the town planner made it a point to make the running of those bullock cart very smoothly in spite of the drainage system sometime which runs in through the middle of the road. The town planner had invented few unique structures which was very uncommon on those days in any other civilization like the great bath. It was a public bath. Anybody could use these baths. An interesting part of this bath that they could invent a kind of brick which were waterproof. For this reason you see lot of waterproof bricks though they are sun baked. That means all these bricks are given a kind of coat which could resist the water from leakage. This is almost a squarish area and it could be approached through staircase in the all four sides and the bathers could enjoy their swim and just uh, waiting themselves like any other modern days swimming pool that we have. Another interesting thing is the greenery. The people of Indus Valley were mainly agriculturist. They have come out of the hunting age and knew to cultivate their lands. This kind of cultivation and agriculture made them more and more intellectual, art oriented and ready to use the time for art and culture. Because mostly agriculture uh, uh, took uh, two seasons and other time they are mostly on rest. And these areas, this area of the years they spend on making art, then music and other thing. So we see 
that Indus Valley civilization not only gave us the wonderful architectural structures, but also many, many artifacts and art objects of that period. The artifacts and art objects, which we'll discuss later, but let us first know that what kind of material they prefer to use. The period, the proto-historic period, I mean, they already have learned how to use metal. Beside the metals, they are also using the very common and cheap kind of material that is clay. We all know that clay does not actually last long. In water, it gets melted and the whole thing is lost. For this reason, they discovered terracotta. Terracotta is actually a kind of uh, material uh, it is nothing but when the clay had been baked in oven or kiln that gave it perpetual stability for long, long time. In fact, we still have some of the uh, terracotta artifacts in form of pottery, in the form of sculpture and form of toys till date. And all these things we are going to discuss in our next episode.